Let's go. <laughs> Did the glove box just open and everything fall out of the glove box? You can scream, it's okay. <laughs> you just hold, hold your breath, right? The Tesla Model X receives an intensive update or even facelift and the new plat version, the most powerful one. And here was Thomas, an auto gefühl for you in 4K, full screen and full length. That's how you watch our channel. We'll tell you all about it, what you need to know. Is this still the benchmark of EV SUVs? Here in the lower part, this part was before black in a separate piece. Now the whole front is basically one piece here in the lower end. So a more aerodynamic and also fluent design. And one of the aerodynamic pieces is also here in the side part, this air curtain. The air is being channeled through, goes in here and really exits then here in the wheel arch. So even better aerodynamics, better efficiency for the Model X together with new headlamps. 5 meters 04 or 198 inches is the length of the Model X. This has remained the same, but changes here in the side profile in general for the update or the, for the facelift, both also for the plat model here. Blacked out frames, so the chrome delete as they call it, so it looks sportier, more sinister. Also then here the door handles are in black. Wheels here then also in black and either 20 or 22 inch. These ones here are the bigger 22 inch wheels, so overall a sportier, more present look for this Model X. Interesting also technology-wise, so you either get the normal dual motor concept or in the most powerful plat concept, then you have three motors in general because you have two at the rear axle, one at each wheel, and that enables even better torque vectoring. Overall, more than a more than thousand horsepower of power output. We'll also then tell you later more about the acceleration in the driving part. Air suspension is standard, so you also have a more comfortable ride than in the Tesla Model Y, the smaller SUV. As for the rear, usually I'm not a fan of black details because to me it looks sometimes a little bit over the top, but here for the Tesla models, I think it looks indeed more premium when these details here are blacked out somehow. Because the Model X especially, it doesn't look that sporty overall, but with these black accentuations, I think it fits here very, very well. Are you team black accentuations and black wheels? Tell me in the comments or team chrome, decide for yourself. Top speed here, by the way, for the plat model, even a little bit faster overall here at 260 kilometers an hour or 160 miles an hour, even for German Autobahn, more than enough. And as for the battery size, it remains at 100 kilowatt hours net. And in the Model X should bring us just an you know, approximate average, like 450 kilometers or 270, 280 miles. So not as far as the Model S, because this one is not as efficient as the Model S. The acceleration figures around four seconds for the normal model, 2.5 seconds for the plat model. Yeah, but the thing is, they do it with this rolling start. So in comparison to other manufacturers, these are kind of like, you know, these figures are a little bit nicened up. So it will be a little, you know, a couple of tenths slower than, than these official figures. But if you use this acceleration, you have to recharge at some point. And here the charging flap is in the rear, 250 kilowatt of a charging peak. Here then AC DC charging, here the supercharger, and supposed to be a little bit less than 30 minutes, then from 10 to 80% state of charge. Then inside of the doors, new materials here, really good. All soft touch, this is all leather. The whole interior is now animal free as well. And here the fabric inserts, look at that, this looks pretty premium. Also behind the 22 speakers overall in the vehicle, new premium sound system. This is here how you open the door now or close it, you've seen it. You can also close it with that, but also with pressing of the brake pedal. And then here, of course, one of the biggest news is this yoke steering wheel. It is open on the top here. So you have a better view to the digital instruments, but is it also better or worse for handling? We will find out in the driving part. Seats here, now perforated once again. And that means also the seat cooling is available. And this perforation here looks cool. It feels really nicely. And 
this is a very good soft quality so improve the build quality here as well seeing in position nice upright very comfortable and the new seats here ergonomics and also the material this is really a good plus definitely way more comfortable than the ones before so i think a very very good upgrade indeed and everything from the controls most of it is done in the touchscreen and then for example you can also control the um, side mirrors from here or when you want to adjust the steering wheel you have to click in the menu and then you can also go like here in and out then with the button on the steering wheel also here for this yoke steering wheel tester model 3 and tester model y customers will know how this works and first impression of the yoke steering is weirdo a little bit definitely it's quite wide also um it feels like you know in like a you know, computer game or something i wonder how it is you know when you ease the car in and out of a parking lot we'll also try that in the driving part later new interior overview really impressive and you see here the screen is now horizontal like in the model y or model 3 very interesting at the moment the central view but however, when you go into display, then you can also tilt it towards the driver and that way you can really better see that. And when the car is stationary, you can also tilt it towards the passenger actually, when you want to watch something or control something, that's a cool thing. But for you to see it better here in the static part, I leave it then in this center thing. Soon more deals for the infotainment system. Here definitely, once again, the view on the yoke steering wheel. It is a cool view to the digital instruments, yes. And the good thing about X and S is, in contrast to Model 3 and Model Y, you have digital instruments. I think it's essential to see that, and not only the speed up there. Two inductive charging pads are still here, and you now also put the key card there to drive the car right there. And one thing that is really new as well is, there is no stall common here, column here whatsoever. Here, by the way, is now the drive mode selector. Slide it forward in the screen, then you can drive forward, slide it backward in the screen, then you drive reverse. However, there's still one alternative. When you press this lower bar here, these buttons appear for parking, reverse, neutral, and D. So you can also use it here in the lower area. To me, I think I would still rather use this. Turning indicators are also on the steering wheel here with these capacitive buttons, but they give you some kind of feedback. And yeah, I think it's not too bad. And on the right side here for the cruise control and here also for the voice input, a separate button now. And then here the instruments, they change when you have it in drive, then the speed right here. So pretty clear and crisp, everything I need and definitely prefer to see the speed while driving and when you have the navigation set on the left side you also see a small map the screen here with the map integration wow that's really responsive way to go it's really really very cool and then once again here with drive reverse or park here you can also open the doors for example or the trunk or the trunk as for the climate unit here also you switch between heat and cool that way I can activate the seat cooling or seat ventilation and here then the seat heating. Both at the same time, not really possible or voice control. Activate seat heating. There we go. And the voice control really works very, very nicely. And this is also direct access to the rear view camera here. They still don't offer Apple CarPlay and Auto because they say, hey, our system is the best ever and then we don't need Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I don't agree with that. The system is really cool, offers a lot of possibilities, but I think you should still give the customer a CarPlay connection if you know customer wants to. Lower middle console, still two inductive charging pads for your phone. And then this is kind of like a split opening. You slide this one open here, or you can also slide it to half like this and then even further, this one open and the cup holders away and then there's more space underneath. And then under the armrests, just lift it like this and even more space. And here when I want to get out again, here, press the door and you see here, it almost opens completely. It's a very good comfort feature. And then when I hit the brake, I can close the door. It's a very nice comfort feature indeed. But what happens when someone is standing on the outside uh, a small kick. <laughs>
And when you close the door here, what about that? Yeah, you feel it, but it doesn't hurt that much. Yes, these Falcon doors are still very spectacular. And you see, they also can open in quite narrow spaces, narrower than you think, actually. And here with one meters 89 or six foot two, I can still stand underneath them. <laughs> so <laughs> the setup is five seater, six seater or seven seater for the Tesla Model X that has been unchanged. Unless you go here for the most powerful plat version, then there's only the six seater and the space behind the driver's seat is actually, put that all in the back, is not that plentiful. So um, when I'm driving here, you see it does work with the legroom, but it's not too far. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm always using a lot of seat space. So um, it does work for uh, tall adults, but close actually. What about the headroom? So when you come a little bit closer and you can also come here inside, and see here behind this seat, um, the thing is like, there is this glass uh, roof here also, and then you still have enough headroom left. So here, oh, yeah, <laughs> here it's just a little bit closer. You now also get here this screen in the rear, and there you can, for example, control the vents here, and that looks really fancy. And for this digital solution, it's quite, quite easy to control so gone are the manual days for the vents more and more manufacturers go in this direction indeed to control the vents by that by the way this screen will also be used for streaming so you can also watch them here in the rear while driving for example watch some Autogefühl of course there we go yay and hit subscribe if you haven't done so far and in the lower part here, two USB-C chargers and cup holders. They fold out in a premium way. Also, you know, have a little bit flexible here. So it's actually a very nice solution. And here in the third seating row, yeah, I can squeeze myself through here. No isofix. And well, as a tall person, you cannot fit here behind these seats uh, with your legs. But I can squeeze my legs somewhere here in the middle. So at least you can go somewhere. For emergency situations, it works. It's more the case of children that are not that small that they still need a child seat, but not as tall yet. So something in between, and then you just have this flexibility. You know, the German manufacturers with their EVs quite often do not offer a frunk. Here, of course, they do. A lot of space then here also in that front trunk. Means frunk. <laughs> and now the trunk here we go and the width here is about a meter or 40 inches that's good here a uh, cabin trolley fits in behind the third seating row as well you press these buttons then here to release them head restraints fold and then you can push them like this and then you have this normal trunk length which is to these seats here you know, it's like 115 in meters or 45 inches and this is then here a very big uh, hole and in the trunk like really massive space then of course also for charging cables and so on and well you could move these here a little bit more forward and the advantage of the through bench is that you can fold it but then this case then here with the captain seats in the six seater setup well guys i want to start this thomas's driving lounge with the tesla model x with the german autobahn because this is the plat model and we know it from space balls just after ludicrous there's only plat this grid and well when we're getting on the german autobahn here from 40 kilometers an hour let's see if we're in a safe way we have a lot of traffic here today so we have to wait a little bit behind this one and let's go <laughs> did the glove box just open and everything fall out of the glove box you can scream it's okay <laughs> you just hold hold your breath, right? Did that just happen? <laughs> uh, okay, from 80 kilometers an hour, one more time. Holy! 140. Oh my gosh! And now from 100 kilometers an hour, let's see if it's still something. And that's 200. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 
Oh. You know, I'm used to driving fast cars, but this is getting the, the adrenaline heating up for me as well. <laughs> oh, Whew. yeah, that was something incredible. And I really have to check the time codes for the acceleration uh, in there. That is really something. So it is not something from everyday driving and yeah, Indeed, it is so fast that it's not that safe to do it, definitely not. So please don't repeat this at, at home. Yeah, at home, of course, not, but you, you know what I mean. So uh, for everyday driving life, I would rather, um, I'm a, even a little bit dizzy now in a way. <laughs> wow, that is like here. You can also pick the chill mode, for example, and then when you accelerate then, you know, the throttle is just a little bit delayed. But however, you can always push it through it's a little, a little bit more still, but even then, you don't get the full acceleration, even when pushing it through. So in chill mode, it's really chilled out, is definitely more relaxed. Sport would be something in between. And plat then, oh yeah, I want to race that uh, 350Z. <laughs> and plat then, of course, with the full performance, full acceleration. But that is something out of this world indeed. Um, here now the yoke steering on the motorway is actually quite good so that's no problem at all also when you do some lane changes here for example then it's fine and then I'm I'm really positive about it because it kind of enables me a better view to the front not only to the instruments but also here it's unobstructed so I really like it on the motorway and as for the reactions here it's quite direct indeed and for the lane changes is all fine. I think it's really uh, later on um, go on depth than on you know parking in and out on the parking lot and so on. But here for the motorway, it's actually totally fine. And maybe <clears throat> also one more step towards this autonomous plan that Elon Musk has. And suspension-wise on the motorway, since we have the air suspension here, we have good comfort also, especially um, this air suspension is working well when you have some waves, you know that everything is even out. Still, it's set on a more or less sporty tone that you don't have too much shaking up effect. And now from 100 kilometers an hour, one more acceleration. You ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> oh God. 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. It's like nothing. It's really like nothing. Yeah, and when this white bomb comes from behind, you better make free way for this one. Wow. It feels kind of futuristic as well to control with the yoke steering wheel. So it has, to me, not only pros and not only cons, it has both basically. And well, what about easing this car in and out of the parking lot? So I feel like a real shifting lever is always a more connected experience to the vehicle. So it works here with the screen, but I'm not too happy with it. But it's also not the big problem or something. But here then, you know, when you... I think that the, the, the steering wheel concept here, it could be cooler when it's a little bit smaller, I would say. And then here, easing the car in and out of the parking lot. I'm not sure how it looks like on camera, but it kind of feels a little bit weird. Yes, you will get used to it, definitely. Um, and here, for example, yeah, the good camera system here, but um, it doesn't feel that natural when you're going left and right and left and right again. Um, so for parking in and out, I would definitely prefer a normal steering wheel that you can, you know, better grab around and so on. Um, yeah, that doesn't feel that good. However, when you then start normal driving and so on and do like this and this, then it's actually no problem. Um, of course, the better view to the screen here is only when you have it straight like this. As soon as you go like this, then it's really, really blocking everything. Um, so, yeah, kind of a little bit of mixed feelings about this yoke steering wheel. As for the comfort while city driving, by the way, so uh, oh, I, I still try to... I, where we where is that? Where is that? Ah, yes, I have to press it. Yeah, that's that's one thing you you will get used to definitely over over time. So as for the suspension here, when you have some smaller bumps on the roads and so on, um, air suspension is definitely good to have it, and it's better than in the Model Y. Like 
a hundred times better than in the Model Y, where you, have don't, where you don't have air suspension. But here with the 22 inch wheels, that's with every brand, when you have these extremely large wheels, you feel these small bumps in the road a little bit more. So for more comfort, I would advise to stick with the small 20 inch wheels. Yes, you lose the visual show effect, but you will gain comfort. And back on the motorway here, the aerodynamic form of the Model X also plays a good role. For example, it's also reasonably silent in here. And they now also use active noise cancellation here in that interior. Really interesting because I'm usually not a fan of that. In a lot of vehicles so far, it has been a very unnatural experience. So you felt like you have this vacuum next to your ear. Here, um, it is very very silent in here, um, but they haven't integrated in such a strong way that you would have this strong vacuum effect next to, it, next to your ear. So I think so far it's, it's fine. And what about the fuel economy? Yeah, of course, always fuel economy. Yeah, that's what we all say. Energy economy then in this case. Always depends, of course. And now I try to go more like cruise control motorway, more steady speeds and so on. And then of course you can score some good figures around yeah some 22 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers so some 30 something kilowatt hours on 100 miles that indeed confirms this earlier estimate of around about 450 kilometers of range or like 280 miles very interesting or important fact is here also it is quite cold here today and we still score these figures so first of all and motorway so aerodynamics top and also this new heat pump model s and model x get the heat pump now and that's why we also don't have a bad effect now here in in winter so this heat pump system reduces the difference between summer and winter range than of these electric vehicles so a very good feature to have so it's not a new suv at all here but with all these updates they have done I really say I'm impressed they have stepped up the game and put it really into a modern era here without changing the model like completely without presenting an all new model they've really made very very good and significant updates so overall yeah I think this sets it back to one of the benchmark EV SUVs here in this segment of course the big competitors, the BMW iX, check out that review, or also new, the Mercedes EQE SUV.